Hello and welcome to Learn ADS in 5 Minutes. This is tutorial 46 on antenna and antenna array simulations with RF Pro in ADS 2021 release. Here is the agenda for this tutorial. We'll talk about how to set up antenna simulations inside RF Pro, how to work with 3D far fields and 2D pattern cuts for any kind of antenna which you might be simulating. And to illustrate that, I have two examples here. The first one is coaxial fit patch antenna, which we also worked upon in one of the earlier tutorials on my YouTube channel. The second example I will take is about a patch antenna array, a 16 element antenna array. We will look at how to set up simulations for array and also how do we analyze the data for antenna arrays. Before you continue with this video, I would recommend you to watch tutorial 45 where I have covered the RF Pro basics, which will make your job a little easier before you watch this video. To start with, subscribe to my channel. Once you subscribe, click on the bell icon to enable all the notifications. And after you watch the video, don't forget to hit the like button and share it with your friends and colleagues who may be interested in watching similar tutorial. All right, let's get started and understand how can we handle antenna geometries with a very nice and easy to use RF Pro interface inside ADS. Now here I'm going to demonstrate the same designs which we have covered in one of the earlier tutorial. So the first example is about a coaxial fit patch antenna. And if you recall in the tutorials where we talk about the coaxial fit patch, I used an assembly you know, kind of process. In the first part, I designed a feed point optimized patch antenna geometry. And this geometry had an element which is fully parametric and you could define your feed X and Y location as well as you could define antenna X and Y dimension. Now using that, once we found the right feed location, we then went ahead and designed our coaxial feed and we had another layout for the coaxial feed. Now in this, by combining these two designs of the parameterized antenna and the feed point, we created an assembly here, uh, which you can see on the screen. Now, if you look at this patch antenna geometry in a 3D view, you will notice we have the right ground layer. We do have the patch layer, and then we have a coaxial feed going and feeding our patch element or patch antenna as we required. Now, once I have this assembly, another important thing to note, on the other side of coaxial feed, I already placed two pins, and those two pins are defined under port editor as a combination of plus and minus. So once we have done this much of job in our layout, and we launch RF Pro with the right stack up information, the entire assembly information will be read into RF Pro along with the separate, of course. Now, once we are inside RF Pro environment, and if we you know, look in our geometry in 3D, and let's stretch it a little bit, we are surprised to see that we only you know, have a patch geometry and the ground plane. We can't see the coaxial feed here. And the reason for that is sometimes when you read these kind of assemblies, and if you look under component, your component due to the default recognition rules in RF Pro gets read as a schematic element, right? Now, sometime it will appear correct, sometime it will may, may not appear correct. And the reason for that is when you're launching RF Pro, it has its own recognition rule where, whereby it is by default assigning a schematic mode or a layout mode. And I will show you where all those options are. But even if it is not appearing correctly, I could simply right click, change the component rule and change it to a layout rule. And once you do that, you can notice you have the right feed you know, component appearing along with your patch geometry. Now this is fully suitable to perform electromagnetic simulation. Now to start electromagnetic simulation, I can just right click the user define and delete it so that I only have the full EM analysis here. I already have the pin. I can simply drag and drop this pin to create ports. And because we already had defined plus and minus on the coax feed, 
you can notice the same are respected inside RF Pro environment. Now we can double click on options, define our frequency sweep range. In this case, it's from two gigahertz to three gigahertz as an adaptive sweep. And I can add another single point on my expected resonance frequency, which in this case is around 2.4 gigahertz. Now, once I have these two points, I can go to field storage, either store the fields at all the frequencies, whichever simulator uh, you know uses to simulate the structure in the overall band, or simply I can define user-defined frequencies to save the fields. Remember, each field which you're saving is consuming some hard disk space, and we unnecessarily don't want to sacrifice our hard disk space. So you can be selective what really you want to do in terms of saving that field. When you select user defined frequency, it simply means it will store the field at any single point or any linear sweep points. But in case of adaptive, it will basically store the field at your start frequency and the stop frequency, and it will ignore any uh, points which might come in between during simulation. In terms of simulator, Again, you have a choice of using momentum or FEM, but in the coaxial fat patch, uh, we need to use FEM because you have multiple dielectrics involved. Remember, one is for our patch, another dielectric is for the coaxial feed. So we will go ahead and use FEM. You don't need to do any spatial setting. All the settings which are there default will work for our antenna simulation. Now, once we are done, we simply say done, double click on run to start the simulation. Now, while that simulation is running, let me show you where are these recognition rules by which RF Pro recognizes which element to treat as layout or which to treat as you know, schematic. And again, you can override all those um, basic preferences. To do that, you can go to Tools, Options. Under Options, in the Available tab, you can define how you want RF Pro GUI to work in terms of general options, interface option, modeling option, and so on. So let's go to components. Now under components, if you look at layout rule, these are the keywords which RF Pro will look for before it assigns a layout rule by default. Similarly, for circuit rule, it has certain keywords defined here. And that's what it will assign as the circuit element. And again, if you, are, if you have a habit of using certain keywords in your designs or sub-circuits, you can add your own um, you know, keyword here so that whenever you read that kind of design inside RF Pro, you have the right role defined automatically. But even if, don't take too much of a stress, even if it doesn't get assigned properly, it's just a matter of one single click, changing the component role to the desired operation. All right, so once I close the simulation status window, how do I go back? Well, on the right-hand side, notice you have simulation button here. And if you click on that, it brings back your simulation design. Now, once you do that, you can see your simulation is performed, but in the status window, I can't see any far field getting saved. And the reason for that is under our options, when we went to field storage, we saved the fields, but we forgot to select the far field option. And now, uh, you know, we shouldn't have done that mistake, but now since we have done, we will go ahead and enable the far field, um, you know, computation. We double click and we run a simulation again so that the earlier simulation gets overwritten. Now again, it will take another 30 seconds or so. In the meantime, let me explain you a couple of more options. Now in EM Pro, in RF Pro, excuse me, if you have a lot of these geometries and you have a lot of these filled conductors, and if it is getting difficult for you to look at your geometry properly, and the bottom here in terms of visibility, you can change conductors to be wireframe so that they end up you know, shown in outline mode, or you can switch it back to the solid mode. So you can use some of these options. Now to inspect your geometry from different 2D or 3D angles. You have a couple of options here. So the first button, if you click on this down arrow key, you can switch various modes to view your geometry in terms of 2D. 
Similarly, in 3D, you have a variety of options to see your geometry from the desired you know, look angle at different, different uh, you know, points. Now, again, if you want to you know, sweep through all the modes one by one without having to always click on this down arrow, not a problem. Just keep the control key pressed and while control key is you know, kept pressed, you keep on clicking on this icon and one by one, it will sweep through from all the look modes which you have defined here. And whichever mode you find suitable, you can just release your control key and you can stop at that point. All right, so now let's go back to our simulation status. You see the simulation finished in 30 seconds and it did compute far field from two to three gigahertz and also some of the warnings for the fields um, or far field which we didn't save from. And that's absolutely fine. This warning was expected. Now, once the simulation is finished, I can expand the results option here. Double click on S parameter. And in the viewer, I only have one port S parameter data. So we click on 1, 1. We can notice the S11 plot and the Y axis is in dB and the X axis is your frequency in gigahertz. Now at this point, if you also want to see the impedance represent, you know, shown by this patch from S parameter, you can switch it to input impedance. And now you can see impedance of your antenna geometry versus frequency. And again, you can place a marker at the desired location and, and look at those results. All right, let's switch it back to S parameter and magnitude. Now, once I see the S parameter and I found them useful or you know correct as we expect, we can double click on the far field and open the far field viewer. And at the same location where you were just seeing the geometry, now we have the far field. Far field, the result type by default is E field. You can look at various options available. Let's switch it to gain. And in terms of gain, we look at frequency and switch to 2.4 gigahertz. And now you can notice on the top level here, you have a gain in DBI spectral plot. And the, the geometry here shows you the gain in 3D and you can rotate in the, in the view angle, which is more suitable. Now this geometry currently is fully opaque but you can set the transparency level by clicking on this percentage sign here and make it slightly more transparent so that along with the geometry, you can also see your patch structure and you can see the orientation of the far field plot with respect to your geometry. The white arrow here shows you the main lobe direction. And if it is aligned with these red, green or blue, which is basically representing x y and z as you can notice from this triad here and if it is aligned that means you have you know um, perpendicularly uh, expanding gain pattern and if not you will see this white arrow slightly tilted showing you the main lobe direction with respect to the geometry uh, which you are simulating now there are plenty of other tabs here feel free to explore it on your own if you go to statistics, if you look at full pattern, or if you only want to see uh, upper hemisphere or want to do calculation only on upper hemisphere, you can do that. And if you want to do that calculation on a full pattern, you can change all these options. If you select other statistics, it basically shows you the main lobe direction, the maximum gain offered by this antenna and so on. So here you can see theta is the having the range of minus 180 to 180, which is overall 360 degree and phi from zero to 180 degree. So that's the amount of radiation pattern data which we are computing here. All right, so let's go back uh, to setup window here. So that was about 3D far field. Now, how about if we want to create a 2D pattern cut for this antenna? Well, that can be done by clicking on this option, create line graph. Then you can select whether you want to see data on X, Y, or polar plot. And let's assume we select polar and the independent axis is theta. You can select the frequency on which we would like to do the plot. And you can change the frequency by moving this slider. Right now you can see I only have three frequency points. Or you can do that by clicking on this up and down arrow key. Similarly, 
the phi angle on which you want to extract the cut can be selected by changing the slider or by changing using this up and down arrow. So if you want to extract a phi cut, um, you know, at 90 degree of phi, we can click on view and now it computes the phi cut at 90 degree. And this graph, which you are seeing, gets added under this graph list. And by default, the name is given as uh, gain versus theta. But of course, we can you know, change it. Let's say phi equals 90 degree. So my first graph is about that. Now, if we close, we go back here, create another line graph. And let's say in this case, I will create a phi as 0. You can send the, the data of this new 2D cut onto a new graph. That means a new graph will be added into the tree. Or you can send the data onto the same graph which you already created. Choice is yours. So if I select the same graph and click on view, now you have another plot here, which is as per phi uh, equal to zero degree. And the earlier plot was phi 90 degree. But again, the choice is yours. All right, so that was all about how to simulate a typical uh, coaxial fit patch antenna. And if you have a regular patch antenna, the process is very, very similar. There's absolutely no change. Now let's go ahead to our agenda and talk about antenna array simulation because that's pretty interesting here. So let me close this RF Pro. Let's save it. And in my ADS workspace, I do have a patch array 4 cross 4 layout design. And in this layout, I have each patch element being fed by a point, you know, feed. I have removed the coaxial feed. It's the same antenna which we used in coaxial design. But instead of having 16 coaxial feed, which will take a lot of memory and RAM in order to make, you know, uh, this tutorial video, I removed that and I just put a point feed at the right location so that I have the right antenna array. But on your side, if you have enough RAM and simulation time available, you can go ahead and have 16 coaxial feeds in your antenna array. Now, each of these array elements are defined for having a ground port on CON2 layer. So all 16 feed points, as you can see, are referring to ground layer of CON2. And again, this all things we have covered in the previous tutorial videos, how to work with this ground layer and so on. Now, if you look at the stack up, I have this kind of two layer stack up. I have a con and con two, and this is stack up exactly the same which we use for our coaxial you know, patch antenna design. These three elements are modeling the coaxial. One is dielectric, the outer shell of the coaxial, and this is the center pin although these things are not used in our patch antenna array uh, right now. So what's important here is CON and CON2. So that's your patch uh, layer and that's your ground layer. And I have defined a bounding area uh, here to restrict the finite size of this dielectric uh, to this particular you know, size as you see on the screen. Now, once this is done, I can launch RF Pro uh, from here. So the entire hierarchy with all the pins, all the reference points, everything will be loaded into RF Pro environment. And you can see that here. If I stretch the geometry into 3D, you can see your 16 patch elements along with the ground pin. And again, we don't have a coaxial feed here. All right, so once I have the patch array, how do I set it up for electromagnetic analysis? So let me show you that. So right click, let's create a new FEM uh, you know, full EM extraction. I already have one analysis which I have already pre-simulated to show you the results, but let me show you the process here. Now, once you have the analysis built in, I just need to take the pins and if you expand, you can see there are 16 pins which are being read from my layout. And I can just simply drag and drop these pins to create 16 ports. And if I click on one, you can notice I have plus, on the con layer and minus to be placed on con2 layer. So all 16 uh, ports have been defined. And in the manner I have placed these ports is one, uh, two, three, four. So one row is on going from lower X to upper X here. And five is starting from the second row till eight. 
9 to 12, 13 to 16. So that's how the ports have been assigned here for easy remembrance. And that's how anybody would do it who is working on antenna array. Now, once you have the ports defined, as simple as, you know, like last time, I go ahead and set up my frequency sweep. So let's say from 2 gigahertz to 3 gigahertz. And once you have the main sweep covered, we add another single point here. And again, like last time, we will add 2.4 gigahertz. That's my expected uh, resonance frequency. In field storage, I will go and save user-defined frequencies. And again, as I said, in user-defined frequency, it will save fields for 2.4, 2 gigahertz, and 3 gigahertz. And also, we will store the far field and I will use five degree resolution to capture the far field data. For simulation, we'll just simply go ahead and use FEM, but because this design is only point feed, you can also use momentum microwave in case you want. But in my case, I will just keep it as FEM. Click done and double click to run analysis. And now the simulation will finish in another three minutes or so. So while the simulation is running, let me show you the results, which I already obtained by running this analysis. And it's exactly the same type of analysis like how I set it up. The only difference here, my far field, I am computing with one degree resolution here. And later I will show you the impact of five degree versus one degree. And then you can take your, make your own educated choice, uh, which resolution you use for your design. Now in terms of simulator, again, I used FEM simulation, so no difference here. Now under results, I can open the S parameter you know, viewer window. So here is your X parameter, and here is your 16 cross 16 S parameter data. So if you want to see return loss of all the patch elements, I can select all of them by pressing Shift key. Right click and select raw return loss. And now you will see all 16 port return loss plotted here. Now notice for all the plots, the return loss doesn't look the same. Although the patch have exactly the same dimension, they are being fed exactly at the same point, still the return loss is not same. And that's very peculiar for your array antenna design. Now, if you want to zoom in in terms of X axis around 2.3 to 2.4 gigahertz, I can click on this pencil icon, go to axis, uncheck this auto you know, in terms of X and Y axis, or right now I'm only doing it for X axis. So let's say start is 2.3 gigahertz and stop is 2.4 gigahertz. And now you can notice the different, different patch elements are having a different different resonant frequencies. And also the return loss uh, amplitude is different. Some is going as worse as around 13 dB. And each of these patch elements, so let me close this um, you know, editing option again. So this is return loss. If you want to see input impedance of each patch element, of course, like last time, I can switch it to input impedance. And now you can see, as S11 was predicting, all input impedances are different. Now, this is a very, very important concept in our phased array system design. Because when you connect this phased array antenna to your TR module system, you will have power amplifiers as the final uh, transmitter components in TR module. And each power amplifier is going to see these different, different impedances. And those power amplifiers are very susceptible to load impedance, as you would understand. So all these um, you know, anomalies is going to play a part in how your overall phased array system behaves. And in my YouTube, on your, my YouTube channel, I'm having a parallel playlist on phased array system design. You are welcome to watch those tutorials. And later, as we go along in that tutorial series, I will take the data from RF Pro simulation in terms of S parameter file, and I would include that along with my phased array system to capture the impact caused by these phased array antenna elements in our overall system design. So pretty, pretty interesting and very, very important topic to remember. So that's our first takeaway from this analysis. All patch elements or all array elements 
have different impedance which they are going to present in your phased array system. All right, let's change it back to S parameter in terms of magnitude and I have this plot. Now, if you have too many plots and you want to remove all of them, we can simply right click anywhere, say remove all plots, everything is gone. Now, the second important consideration in any array antenna is about the inter-element coupling. We need to look at. Now, with having 16 cross 16 S matrix to plot the data is very, very simple. So here I'm going to show you example by keeping one element as a reference. Later you can you know, explore rest of the option. So I'm going to take first element as a reference. And if I click on this icon here, which will give me S21 or S12, I can see the isolation between port number one and port number two. And you can see it is close to 20 dB of isolation. Similarly, if I click on this button here, it gives me S31, which is isolation between port one and port three. Now, where are those ports? I already demonstrated just a few minutes back. So if you keep clicking on these uh, buttons here, you can keep noticing the isolation between different, different patch elements. And you can see there are a couple of uh, elements here which are giving you worse than 20 dB or near 20 dB coupling between them. Now, if I have to identify uh, which one of those, so let me switch off this legend here. We can place a marker on whatever you know port we are trying to analyze. If we just place one marker there and we place another marker on this tree, so you can see there are two markers here now. We end the command by clicking on this pencil icon here. If we double click on that marker, we can see the worst performing elements are between P1 and P5, and that's S15 trace, which you are seeing here, right? So later we will see where is P1, where is P5, but that's the worst performing pair in terms of isolation. Similarly, if I double click on the second trace, obviously we know it's P1 and P2, that is S12. So two elements are the worst performing. All other elements are below 25 dB isolation, which is kind of pretty good. Now let's see in our structure, where are those two elements? Now, if I go to my ports, select P1. So that's the first element with respect to what we were seeing. Now, if we press control key and select the second one, obviously that's the nearby element. And if we press the control key again and click on P5, that's the other element. So these two elements uh, with respect to port one have the poor uh, isolation. I would not say poor because anything better than 18 dB is usually fine, but they are the worst performing and that's pretty logical because they are the closest elements here. Okay, so that's the, the second takeaway from this phase today, um, you know, analysis, how to find the inter-element isolation in your phase today system. All right, so now once we have these two covered, let's go and talk about how do we plot far field uh, for this antenna design here. So for far field, I can simply double click on the far field plot. And now the far field um, you know, radiation pattern will be loaded on this geometry here. It's taking few minutes because remember I told you, I computed it with one degree resolution. So it has a lot of data to render. Five degree resolution would have come instantaneously. All right, once we are in far field plot, we can go and look at gain. So that's the gain of our antenna. And then you can change the frequency to be 2.4 gigahertz. And here, if you look at the top level here, the gain shown is around 7.4 dBi which is much less than what I was expecting uh, from this antenna. And the reason for that is the entire array is not yet excited. Notice here it's under single excitation and only P1 port is excited. So this gain pattern is only for the first element in our array where we have placed the port P1. Similarly, if you click here, we can click on P2 and now you will have a radiation pattern when the second port is initialized and the rest of all the elements are in silent mode. Now, if you want to keep going through each of these elements, you don't need to always click on this menu here. 
while you are in this menu, you can click on the down arrow key and automatically change to P3. While you are sweeping, you can see all the radiation patterns are different and even the main lobe arrow seems to be different for all the elements. And this is our third takeaway from this analysis. Each patch element, even despite being identical, being fed exactly with the same amplitude or at the same location, still have a different radiation pattern. And this is how any realistic phased array antenna is designed. Each radiation pattern is different. And again, all these things will have important bearing in our overall phased array system design, which I'm going to cover in my system view tutorial playlist, which is titled of phased array tutorials. All right, so if you have to excite the entire array from here, we can select multiple excitation. And once we are in multiple excitation mode, I can select set port excitation and it gives me a table. Now using the table, I can enter amplitude of whichever element I would like to excite. For example, if I only want to excite the first row from P1 to P4, and we click apply, you can expect one cross four linear array kind of radiation pattern. Although not very optimum, but you can see the gain has increased to 12.4 dpi. Similarly, I can keep going and I will go ahead and excite all the elements which I have in my array. Now the next column you can notice is about phase. So by default, all phase are defined as zero degree. That means when I apply, I will have a zenith looking kind of beam and that's more like a typical phase today uh, antenna radiation pattern, isn't it? Now each of the feed parasitics can be entered using this RLC and you can feel free to add any parasitics or the feed um, you know, properties there. For the moment, I have assumed all of them to be nice and clean 50 ohm here. All right, so once we have the 3D radiation pattern of this phased array, you can again change the transparency so that you can see the, the phased array radiation pattern along with the geometry here. Right, now once we have that and if you want to extract a 2D cut like I showed you last time, you click on create line graph, select polar plot or XY plot, select your frequency, the phi cut, and you click on view and now you have the far field cut pattern of the phased array antenna. Now again, if you want to change the axis uh, font, you can click on this pencil icon. You can give the graph whatever title or name uh, you want to give. And from the axis, you can change the font size here. All right, so that's pretty simple. Now that was polar plot. What about XY plot? So if you close this, go back, click on create line graph again, Click on XY plot, select the frequency, independent axis to be theta or phi. If you change it to phi, now you can select the theta location or if you keep theta as your X axis, you can choose the phi. When we click view, now you have you know, theta from minus 180 to plus 180 and you have a 2D cut. And again, you can place marker, look at the side lobe levels and you know, do all the computation as you require in terms of 3db beam width, etc. Right, so that was all about phased array. Now, remember while I was doing that, I before we started this, we started simulation of this analysis two. And if you look at simulation log, analysis two finished, and it took like three minutes on my laptop, and it computed far field on these three frequencies. Now, another interesting thing what you can do in RF Pro while your one radiation pattern is active, I can go to another analysis, which I might have set up under different condition or different constraint and things like that. I can open results and I can double click on the far field. Now, once you do that, you have two far fields now overloaded on top of each other. And here under this drop down box, you can see you have a full EM analysis and you are looking at gain of that and analysis two, which I just activated by double clicking on this far field, is showing you the E field. But you can change that E field to gain. So now you have both of these gains plotted at the same location. Now, how, do you, how can you create separation between them? 
while right now I'm in analysis two, and I can change the frequency first to 2.4 gigahertz. And remember, this is only single excitation. I haven't done a full array excitation, and that's fine, just to see the variety. And if I go to display tab here, I can choose the center point of my radiation pattern. By default, this point gets computed based on the setting which you do here. For example, if I want to center my radiation pattern with respect to port one, um, RF Pro will go ahead and compute these center points. And now you can slightly see this radiation pattern coming out uh, from there. And let's set the transparency to completely opaque. Now you can play with these points. For example, I can place it to something like minus 300 or maybe minus 500 mm just to push that apart. And now you can see that I have two radiation patterns. One, which is coming from my first analysis, which is this full EM analysis. And this one coming from my analysis too. And any manipulation or any modification you want to do, for example, right now, my active analysis gain plot is analysis two. And instead of single excitation, if I change it to multi-excitation, and go back to this table and let's excite the first row of my antenna. Click apply, you can see now you have two radiation patterns located side by side. So this way, if you are creating a variance or different type of analysis for your antenna with different condition, let's say one with clean feed, another with having some feed parasitics, and you would like to compare you know, side by side you can do that very, very easily in terms of visual performance. But right now, both of these antennas are same. So if I go here, if I change all these uh, elements to one, like in the earlier case, we can view that very, very easily. And by default, both of them will give you the same result with absolutely no difference. However, you can see with five degree resolution, it is not as a smooth radiation pattern as we have got with one degree resolution. But just to illustrate uh, two uh, different things, but basically representing the same data. Now, why should I set five degree resolution? Why should not I set uh, one degree resolution? Well, it's purely designer's choice, but if you look in the simulation log, the full EM analysis took nine minutes of my compute time on my laptop. And majority of that time went into far field computation because you are doing that with very, very fine precision. However, in the analysis two, which we just ran, took only three minutes of my simulation time because I was computing far field with five degree resolution. So choice is up to designer whether that much resolution is really required. If yes, then go ahead and set your far field computation with that. Otherwise, if five degrees is fine, it's just, just good and sufficient for most of your calculations. All right, so with this all points, uh, we cover all the agenda points. One last thing which I thought will be good to cover is when you have this S16 port S parameter file, and let's say you want to export this as parameter file in SNP or touchstone format so that you can take it to system view or any other software of your choice. If you want to use it uh, for some application, you can do that very easily from RF Pro. So while you are in S parameter plot, go to file, save as, and then you can change the format as SNP. Once you click export, you can go to your desired folder and export an S16P file, or if you had 32 elements or eight elements, corresponding touchstone file can be exported very, very, very easily uh, from RF Pro interface. All right, so that's all for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed the content presented. It gives you a lot of new information and also show you how easy it is to perform your antenna simulations in RF Pro, look at various um, you know, performance matrix for your antenna as well as array, array antenna designs. And it gives you a great ease of use and a very refreshing new GUI to work with 
when you are dealing with some of these complex structures. So thanks very much for your time and attention and staying till the end with me. Uh, hope you have a good time designing your circuits and look forward to see you in my next tutorial video. Thanks a lot and have a great day ahead.